Welcome. In this video, I will show you how to take data from a file and read it into an array in C++. The first thing we must do is declare an array. We have an array right here, which we are declaring. We start with the size of the array being a constant integer. It must be a constant because the compiler must know what the size of the array is at compile time in order to allocate the proper amount of memory for our program. If it's not a constant, then this could vary, so the compiler would not know at compile time what the size would be, and it would cause an error. So we make this constant of array size, which we will use to reference the size of our array anytime we need to in our program. We then come down here and we declare the array. This array will hold integers. We will call it ARR and it will be of size array size, which is 10, which we defined right here. The next thing we will need is a file to read from. So here we have a file that has some data in it and we call it in.txt. This in.txt is in the same directory as our C++ program. So when we come over here, first thing we need to do is include fstream so we can read from a file and output to a file if we need to. And then we can come down here and we can, as usual, create an input file stream variable called ifile. We will then open this in.txt file, this file over here, into this ifile variable, which we can then use later on in our program as you see down here. Now that we have our input file in our program, in this ifile variable, we can read from that file into our array, which we do right here in this while loop. We will use a counter to count the amount of data points that come in from our array because we could have up to 10 elements in this array, but this file could have less than 10 elements. And then in that case, we would need to account for that. So that is what we are doing right here. And then this is a end of file controlled while loop, which will read from the input file into the array at the position of count. It will read into that array and then increment our counter. So then the next time it reads in, it will be one. So it will place something at one and then increment our counter because there is two to two. And that means there is two total in elements in our array at indexes zero and one. And then it will go on like that, so forth, so on and so forth until it hits the end of the file. We then close our file because we are done reading from it and do not need it anymore in our Lastly, we will print the elements to the screen just as we have done in the previous video on arrays. So if we come down to a terminal and compile this program with G++ and the name of the program and then run it with dot slash a dot out, you see we get the numbers output to the screen. And if I come in here and say delete two numbers out of the file, when I come back over here and run the program, you see I get the array only going to 93 because we deleted those two numbers. And in our printing right here, instead of going to this array size, which is 10 always, we are going to this count, which we are keeping when we are reading from the file. So instead of using this static array size, we are only using up to count elements in the array. So technically in this example, we have two spots in the array we just never are using, and that's okay. Where it becomes not okay is if we have more things in our file, then we start getting into risky waters. If we put 90 here, it may not give us much of a problem. We can come here. Oh, here it will give us an abort trap six, which in this case means, hey, you're going past the end of your array, but that's okay. You're not going too far. We'll just give you a little abort trap six. 
But if you go too far past the end of your array, let's see, I'll just add a bunch of numbers here. If we come here and run it, you see we get another abort trap six. I'm not gonna keep adding numbers to this file. At some point, you will get a nasty error down here that says segmentation fault 11. And at that point, you know you're just going way too far past the end of your array. So don't do that. If you need more, if you need this many spots in your array, make sure that you make your array the proper size over here. We do have a problem over here where we are reading from the file though. What happens if we have some error inside of our input file over here? When we come down to the terminal and try and run this program, you see we will get an infinite loop because it hits this error when we are reading in, and then the program has no clue what to do because we have not accounted for input error. So let's come over here and kill our program and get rid of the terminal for a second and account for input error. How can we do that? We can put in some input error accounting right here. This if statement is checking if this I file did not if this read did not work, then we're going to activate this if statement, which will clear and ignore the input that was failed, just as it would do with CN input failure. And if you need more clarity on this, go back to the first time we talked about input files in a video. And that video will clarify what these do for you. But then here we output an error to the screen. And also at the end of this, we want to continue. Because if we don't continue, this count will get incremented. But if we do continue, this count will not get incremented when we hit this error. And when we have an error in our file, we don't want the count to get incremented because that was an erred line. and the count shouldn't get incremented when we have an aired line. So if we save this and pull up a terminal, when we recompile, now that we have changed the code and run it, you see we get an error in input file out to the screen because it hits that error over here and it activates this if statement, which will clear and ignore that error and then output to the screen that there was an error in the input file, and then continue on, and you see we don't get any gaps in our output, because see, after 97 is where that would be, where we at 97 right here. If I didn't put this continue here, then when I came down here and recompiled and ran it, you see we would get a zero right here we get that abort because now we counted we're at 11 which is past the end of our array and we get a zero right here because that count got incremented because we forgot to continue so don't do that make sure you have that continue in there and when we run it you will get no the count won't go up and it will not affect your array and there is actually one more error with our reading in from a file right here. What if over here in our input file, we had a new line or multiple new lines at the end of our file? When we come over here to a terminal and we run this, we will see that we get error in input file output to the screen because of this error right here. But we also get error in input file output because of this new line. Look, if I take away that new line and I run our program, we only get one error output to the screen. But this new line is making it say error. And we all know that this new line at the end is not an error. So how do we fix that? How do we make it not say error when there's a new line at the end of the file? Well, let us, let's just get rid of this terminal for a second. Let's come over here and right here where we are clearing and ignoring and then saying error and input file, well, we can still clear and ignore just for good measure here, but we don't really need to do that when this failure happens 
at the end of the file. So let us just wrap all three of these lines inside of an if statement, which will check if it is the end of the file. So this input error will happen also at the end of the file, but if we are not, if we're at the end of the file, it will return true from this. This not will change that true to a false, and it will not do any of this stuff inside of the if statement. So it won't clear, ignore, and then output an error. So we will just skip that, continue because we don't want to increment the count when we're only hitting the end of the file again. And then it will go over here and exit out of our while loop right there because it's at the end of the file. But if we're not at the end of the file, we still want to clear. So if we're not at the end of the file and input failure happens, we are going to clear and then, whoopsies, we're going to clear and then ignore and then output an error. So if we save this and come back to our terminal, let's clear out our old input. And now that we have changed the code, we need to recompile our program with G++, and then we can run the program with dot slash a dot out. And you see we get error in input file, output to the screen only once, not twice, and we have that new line here. If we take away the new line, we still get only error input file one time. And if we add a bunch of new lines at the end of the file, when we run it, we still only get error in input file one time from that error up there. And that is all I have for you for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.